everybody's talking about how do you fix it. I don't know if it can be fixed with today's NBA players because Eunice, you know, obviously there are injury concerns, and I really just don't think they care or they have that competitive edge like players of yesteryear. You know, you know what? I can fix it. I can fix the NBA All Star Game. I can fix it. Yeah. So this is what you do. What I will say isn't for me right now is watching the All Star Game with the NBA. Uh, oh, that just happened that just, just last weekend. That just right? happened on Sunday. Uh, a lot of people are trashing it. Uh, the most points ever scored in the NBA All Star Game uh, ever. Uh, the most points by one team. I think over 211 points. I believe was scored by the uh, the East the East side uh, as they won that game. Um, and it's not watchable. You know, I kind of watched it, but I let it watch me as I was doing other things. You saw the highlights, whatever. Um, it's not competitive. It's not what it used to be back in the day when Magic and Bird and those guys play. Yeah, we get the alley-oops. We get all the showtime. We get the entertainment part of things. But when it got down to it, usually in the fourth quarter especially, uh, those teams wanted to win back in the day, especially when Kobe was there. Kobe even has a quote talking about, when he and uh, Chris Paul played together, anytime they played, it was like, hey, fourth quarter, we're going to take over, we're going to win this basketball game. And everybody's talking about how do you fix it. I don't know if it can be fixed with today's NBA players because Eunice, you know, obviously there are injury concerns, and I really just don't think they care or they have that competitive edge like players of yesteryear. You know what? I will say I did not watch it, um, but I don't watch a lot of things. So I never use me as a barometer for what people are consuming. Every, you know, millions of people are watching things I've never seen. But I remember growing up an all star NBA all star weekend was an event at my family's house, uh, me and my siblings, because we didn't have an NBA team in Alabama. So this all star was kind of like our team. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> we got to root for all of our favorites playing together. And although, you know, in theory, it's still the same concept with the guys from all the other teams, it's a different energy, not just from the players and their effort. It's a different energy from the fans, because I think right now we have so many different things to consume our attention than we used to have. I think you just either going to have to figure out another way to retool this or to incorporate different aspects. But back then, that was what that was the only thing going on that weekend. That was the only thing that was going to be on TV maybe TNT or TVS, you know? And so I think if you just say, listen, I can either scroll on TikTok for an hour or watch an hour of the All-Star game, I'm probably going to scroll on TikTok for an hour. One, because my attention span is not as long as it used to be. I'm able to source exactly the content I want to get. And guess what? I know that I'm going to get a play-by-play -play rundown of whatever I missed, whether it's social, whether it's I watch it on a sports show, I'm going to know what happened. And so whether it's an award show, it's the Super Bowl, it's the commercials, it's halftime, it's NBA All-Star, I don't feel the pressure to have to watch because I know I'm going to catch it the week later and all the conversations, all the clips. So I don't think the same, the pool is not Just the same. See, like you said, we are in a, a world where we want to consume information quickly. That's why blogs are so popular. That's why TikTok is so popular. That's why you can't put up videos over three minutes because nobody's going to watch. But you know what will be watched? Entertainment. If you keep them entertained and you keep them enthralled, people will watch. People watch three hours of Cat Williams. Three hours. Three hours. Mm -hmm. A lot yeah. of people. Listen, I just I just finished a TikTok series with 50 parts. A woman talking about marrying a pathological liar. And when I tell you that's all anybody's talking Listen. about on the internet, and she did, and to each part was 10 Listen. minutes. And we are finishing 50 Listen. parts of this woman that we don't know story. <laughs> And we just want to hear stories. We want to be engaged. And guess what? The beauty of social is not only do you get to watch it, it's the same thing with the podcast. And we encourage people to share their comments or even this podcast in particular is where we share our perspectives. But it's one of those things where it's like in the comments, somebody's going to say, oh, I know who I was in this story. Oh, I had a situation similar or, oh, that's never happened to me. It's hard sometimes now to consume entertainment where you're not involved. They're not asking me what I think. And you see a lot of times these, these sports teams are trying to put the the, the, um, the RSS feeds of different Twitters or or X's or Instagram, people's comments. So maybe you'll watch to see your comment. You know, but it's just like with the actual NBA All-Star, I can tell you, once Dominique Wilkins and Michael Jordan weren't in the dunk contest, I was right. out. <laughs> right. So we talking about 30 years probably. Right. <laughs> and I ain't really been involved. And I just think it's, it's how do you entertain us when the people who are participating 
don't seem to be entertained. And, and you, you're absolutely right. You got guys like Anthony Edwards who are people talking about being the face of the National Basketball Association in the future. And he's basically saying, you know, I'm not here to be competitive. Basically, this is some time off. And who blames them? To be quite honest with you, these guys grind for 82 games during the regular season. I get that. The most important thing for them to do is to win in the playoffs and win an NBA championship. I understand that. That's the most important thing. This is what they get paid for. Otherwise, it is entertainment. Maybe they should put the NBA All-Star game at the end of the season because you know what it is competitive? If you've ever gone into a workout at UCLA or Chicago somewhere where they have these open-run gyms for the well, private runs for the NBA players and they, uh, they select a couple of college players or maybe G League players come in and play with them, those games are competitive because they feel like they're getting ready for the season and they got a lot of stuff on the line. I don't know if you have that mentality with these players for the All-Star game because guess what? They want to enjoy the festivities too. You know, they're in Indianapolis. I don't know if there's a lot to do in Indianapolis, but they probably were out partying all night long the night before, and they're thinking about the party afterwards, and then they're thinking about, okay, well, I only got a couple of days off. I got to spend time with my family or whatever. I just want to go out there and have a good time and have fun because this is one of the rare times during the season where I can actually relax and enjoy myself. So there's a part of me that says I don't blame them for not doing that, but at the same time, I would like to see that back. And if you want to continue to have an all-star game, if you're the NBA, you have got to put a product out there that is enjoyable to watch and create storylines that make people so intrigued. Because like you said, if there's something that people are interested in watching, they will sit down and consume and watch it. This is the reason why you and this, the reason why I want to do this podcast about sports and entertainment. I didn't want to talk about the X's and O's. I wanted to talk about life experiences. I wanted to touch and see something that maybe an NBA player or a major league baseball player or a sports figure is going through and say, okay, we've gone through that. I know somebody else that's gone through something like that. And if somebody that's listening or watching us right now says, man, I went through a similar experience, guess what? They'll be intrigued to say, hey, we're not alone. And then they'll sit down and they'll watch and maybe they can learn something from it as well. So that I believe you know, is... You know what? I can fix it. I can fix the NBA All-Star. You can game. fix it. I okay, can fix, fix it. Yeah. Fix it out. So this is what you do. You have the top college players. You have the top WNBA <laughs> players. You have the top G League players. And then one or two actual NBA stars or maybe three per team. And you mix and match. That's the roster, right? They're all playing on the same teams. And so now I think... We want bragging rights. You know, I won with a, a the top college player. I won with the WNBA player. I think that would be interesting. That also brings all these other fan bases to this weekend, to this game. That is an all-star for basketball on NBA All-Star Weekend. And I think that would be fun. Maybe have one of the players be the coach. You know, um, seeing the substitutions coming in and out. Seeing these, these people who don't get to shine get to play next to the biggest stars in the NBA. I think that would be fun to watch. I would watch uh, that. You know, also will make them play money <laughs> instead of the money, winner take all type of money uh, at the end of the game. If you say, hey, you know what? The winner of this game, each player gets a million dollar piece, million dollars piece. Guess what? Guess what that fourth quarter is going to be? They're going to be going at it because I don't care how much money you make and these players are making up to $60 million a year. A million dollars for a game, they will take any day. And I know they make that pretty much for a game in, in, in a sense, but uh, they, they will definitely take that for All-Star Weekend, especially some of the younger players out there uh, trying to make a name for themselves. But I like your your suggestion to integrate other players like uh, Sabrina Ionescu uh, and uh, Steph Curry had a three-point uh -huh. contest. And that was watched by over 4 million people. I mean, they called right. five people to watch the three-point contest because that was entry. That was a storyline. That was something different. I feel like even the dunk contest, instead of just having NBA players, I know they had a G League player, Mac McClung, who won it back-to-back. Get some of these guys who are not in the NBA, and that's all they do is dunk. Maybe it's an NBA versus the best dunkers from around the world or whatever. Right. And then the NBA players with their egos being involved saying, we can't let these outsiders show us up on the court that we play on. Maybe that's mm -hmm. even more intriguing than just what we have right now. But I know um, – Unless you're going to get Dominique and Michael Jordan back on the court, I don't know if you're going to get me back for the dunk contest. Let me tell you something. I would something. even say Vince Carter really do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> if you got Dominique and Michael Jordan back on the court, you that ain't gonna be shit you want to watch anyway. Because Dominique and Michael Jordan know. ain't um, dunking you know nothing what? but don't If you have Dominique tossing the alley oop for this young star to dunk it, hey, that's a ten. They went. I mean, I'm saying taking the things that were exciting when they worked and integrating them with what's going on now, 
I think what not only are you paying homage to the past, you also you're getting eyeballs. You're going to get the eyeballs that you haven't gotten since these people retired. Right. So I'm saying you have to get creative and say, you know, just like the NFL got creative when they made up this relationship. No, OK, go ahead. But anyway, you can get creative. <laughs> not this okay. episode. All not right. Yeah. Episode. I mean, I'm gonna, some of the dumbest try and do that pay homage like I'm uh, saying you can do it. <laughs> Jalen Brown brought out somebody who wore the number 21 jersey with Dominique Wilkins and tried to do a Dominique dunk and all that type of stuff like that. That's another story. Uh, but hopefully they'll fix it. Notes from the NBA. It's like, it, the NBA needs to take notes for the NFL. That's all I will say. Okay. Have you ever held on to something too long in your personal life? Have you ever, like, like somebody tried to tell you to change something about yourself and you just said, you know what? Mm, nah, I'm good. And just you were stubborn about it. No, I will say I'm not good with suffering through things. So when I don't want to do something, I stop pretty immediately. But I also don't take other people's information and insight as mine, right? So any job, I've quit every job I've ever had, but that's only because I had gotten to the point I didn't want to work there anymore. From the outside, everybody's like, what? You're here, you're doing this. You know, they only see the good parts. They could convince you, hey, but you're getting paid this, whatever. So, and the same thing I would say in personal relationships. Once I'm out, I'm out. Um, and um, I mentioned that uh, series on TikTok. Uh, it was like, who the F did I marry? But it's, I think a lot of relationships, I remember Whitney and Bobby coming out and Whitney saying, you know, a lot of times because so many people are telling you to get out, you you double down and stay in to prove a point. I have never, I have never been in a situation where I stayed longer than I meant to be in an extreme way. Because I was going to say my timeline is much shorter than the average bear. So by the time I okay. said, well, I stopped to do that for three hours, somebody else was like, well, you could have given it three years. I'm like, absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. What about yeah. you? I think I know your answer. <laughs> uh, absolutely. I mean, I'm very stubborn. I, I've had several people throughout my career try and tell me how to do my job or whatnot. And I've listened to some of it. I've taken with a grain of salt, but I know who I am. And I've had people tell me I needed to be, stop being more like this person and more like this person. But then they're telling me at the same breath, be yourself. Like, well, you're telling me to be like somebody else, so I'm going to be it myself, but I can't be like this guy. I don't get it, man. So, like, I, I think when it comes to that, and, and maybe being stubborn or whatever, maybe not listening to some of that, maybe it it it, it, it uh, stalled my career uh, in some regards or my upward growth at certain places, whatever. But at the, at the end of the day, I know who I am. And when I look myself in the mirror and I'm like, okay, I'm going to fall on my sword and I'm just going to be who I am or whatever, and if they don't like it, they don't like it, then that's fine. But at the end of the day, I just can't lose myself because I've lost myself before. And that's not a good feeling to have, to lose yourself and not know who you are because everybody's trying to tell you how to live your life. You can only live the life that you were intended to live, the one that God gave you. So that's just the way I go about things. So what you're saying is the NBA does not need to take notes from the NFL. I think the NBA, I think the NBA, but they have a, when they know they have a problem, it's an out problem. When the commissioner is coming out and basically saying that there's a problem, then they know that this problem. Now, if I ever looked at it's myself and said, well, yeah, I need, I had a problem. Why am I, I'm not doing this. This is not happening. This is not working for me. I don't feel good about myself. I don't like the product that I'm putting out there. I need help in that regards. I'll go get help. You know, and I think the NBA, they understand that they have a problem. I mean, the ratings are starting to go down. The commissioner's saying that. So they need to go and not be stubborn and, and change certain things and not just make, like you said, maybe not make it an all NBA thing, integrate the WNBA and other aspects of basketball from around the world and make it more of a global thing. I actually liked it when they had the the world against the American stars and all that type of stuff like that. I, I liked it when they chose teams, they went away from that. I liked it when they implemented the um, the rule in the fourth quarter where I can't remember the name of the, the scoring system, but there was a scoring system where the leading team, if they led by a certain amount, you added 24 points in honor of Kobe, and that was going to be the winning score in, in the fourth quarter. I liked that. That made it a little bit more competitive. And if it was a blowout through three quarters, at least the team that was behind the fourth quarter had a chance to come back. You just had to make up some ground. But um, I, I think they go away from it. Are you familiar with the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Who Moved My No, no, no. Okay. Mm -mm, don't okay. Know. So you're talking about all these different things that, that has been talked about or that would possibly. There's this, this is a book. It's called Who Moved My Cheese. It's a very short book. But the, the premise of it is what the NBA is in this situation now and what most of us tend to be in. But. Uh, basically, it gives the example of you put uh, cheese in a maze and you put mice in there. Uh, they're going to go wherever the cheese is. They're not going to keep going to the same place. If the cheese was there yesterday, they'll go, they're going to follow the scent to get to the cheese. Whereas humans, we're going to keep going back to the same spot where the cheese was yesterday versus 
venturing out finding the cheese because we're like, well, it was here yesterday. It's not here today. I'll come back tomorrow and check again. And we are losing strength. We are starving. We are dying. Whereas a mouse will go find the cheese. And we as people tend to say, who moved my cheese? <laughs> right? And, a, and a, an animal is just going to go find it. Right? And so that's where the MBA is. That's where a lot of people who are trying to figure out how to pivot in life is, hey, you can't just keep talking about the cheese was here yesterday and keep coming back to that spot. You got to go find that cheese and not worry about who moved okay. it. Go get it. That's go what get the cheese. Go, yeah. Oh, go, go, that's I like that. That's a, a, a way of life. Go get that cheese. Wait, that's the whole thing. Is if it's not working anymore, pivot. Right. Change it. Don't keep doing the same thing, saying it used to work. That's very. That's very good. It's got to be yeah, a short book for read, read a book. Yeah, it's a short book. Who moved my cheese? Who moved my cheese?